All right, good afternoon. Let's see if this works. Ah, it does. All right. Um, well, I'm Tony Vincent. It's a big name tag. Um, I decided to become a teacher when I was in sixth grade. Uh, I studied each and every one of my teachers and every activity that they ever gave me because I vowed to remember what I liked and what I didn't like all through my school career. Then when I became a teacher and I was the one in charge, I was lucky enough to have handheld computers for my students. Uh, we started using Palms in 2001. Uh, man, when I was 12, I would have loved to have them. Though I think my teachers back in the 80s would have, wouldn't have used them in very engaging ways. Uh, what I remember most about being a kid in school was that we did worksheet after worksheet. So as a teacher, I tried to avoid that as much as possible. And I've also got the opportunity to teach in different places like uh, the Virgin Islands. And anywhere I go when I talk to teachers or students is I just, I just want learning to be fun and engaging. Um, getting students engaged is my mission because uh, boredom is the enemy of learning. But back when we had Palms, uh, we had about 50 different applications that we used. Most of them were kind of drill and skill kind of apps, you know. Um, but there were, were great things. There were things my students had to learn, so they could learn the historical figures, they could learn vocabulary words, um, multiplication tables. But even with thousands of Palm apps, it was sometimes hard to find applications that would move beyond drill and practice. So my favorite handheld nowadays is the iPod Touch. <laughs> and it's kind of interesting to compare what's in the App Store with the number of apps that are available for the iPhone OS that the iPod Touch runs. <laughs> you look at this chart, since this is even a few months behind now, is that it took Palm over 10 years to get 30,000 apps. And then the iPod uh, Touch and, and iPhone, they have today over 85,000 apps in a little over 17 months. So there's tons out there. But of course, many of them are silly and frivolous. I mean, come on, a name tag <laughs> app, that's not very useful. But if you do want a name tag app, for some of you that, that are curious and you want to wear the world's most expensive name badge, there's a website that you can just put into mobile Safari, and then you put in your name, and presto, expensive name tag. So in the App Store, whether it's in iTunes or, or on the device itself, there are 5,855 apps in the education category right now. The education category is the fifth largest. Of course, the largest one is what? Category? Games, yes, by far. There's lots and lots of games. But going in the App Store, there are lots of great apps for learning. You see lots of language learning apps, quizzes, flashcards, math drills. You know, a lot of those are plentiful. And, and again, they'll work. We're working with lower order thinking skills, though. You know, Benjamin Bloom's, uh, Bloom's taxonomy, uh, when he sorted out lower order thinking skills with higher order thinking skills in 1956, put remembering and understanding applying toward the bottom lower order thinking skills, and then things like analyzing and evaluating more toward the top. And of course, the apps that we see right now fit more into the bottom. Uh, though recently people have reworked uh, Bloom's taxonomy to put for the highest order thinking skill and activity that we can have students do is to create. So uh, creating is really the ultimate activity. We have lots of verbs that can describe creating. Uh, I clearly remember being in sixth grade and I made a video where we didn't have computers to do videos. We did it all on videotape, but I made a, a video about uh, the U.S.'s strategic defense initiative, but it wasn't really assigned by the teacher, but I remember I wanted to do it. And I learned so much because picking out these verbs here, making that video, planning, producing, and then broadcasting it just to the class, the VCR, but it was a great activity, creating things and sharing it with people. And uh, I've ran across this quote, somebody put it up on Twitter the other day uh, by uh, American writer John Updike. Any activity becomes creative when the doer cares about doing it right or doing it better. So if we can create as educators for our students or for ourselves 
things that can be authentic and creative, things that students are going to care about, or, man, we might get some learning in there. So uh, I just want to share with you three things you can create on an iPod Touch or iPhone, and actually you can do this on other handhelds too, but since so many of us got iPod Touches for the conference, so I'll, I'll show you. So look at comics, animations, and audio podcasts. Now, first, with comics, that might sound silly or frivolous. But then if you think, a year ago, when Google released its new Chrome browser, instead of doing a press release or a video, they actually commissioned a comic book to tell about the, the new browser and why they're doing it and the technologies and why it's better inside of it. So there's actually a few different apps in the App Store where you can make comics. Uh, comic Touch is one of them. You can import any image that you've saved into Comic Touch and layer text bubbles on top of it. And then there are a few limited special effects. So here, here are some example ones. Uh, this is with vocabulary that, uh, particularly when I taught fifth grade, that my students would really mess up on, a lot versus a lot. Uh, putting together some information about planets, making it a little humorous. Jupiter's feeling a little insecure about its size. Then uh, here's another one. Uh, you, know, you can use your own pictures in there. Uh, uh, this, this uses one of the special effects. You can have this, this bulge effect. And then there's even this one talking about the, the US national debt, which I looked up uh, <laughs> this student in the comic, or the, the, kid, or the baby in the comic saying $35,000 for a US citizen when they're born. That's their debt already. And so in the UK, it looks like you're at a, uh, about 1,300 pounds in debt when you're born right now. Uh, how do you get these images on the iPod Touch? A lot of people don't know this. But when you're in, this is a browser page. But if you have an image in the browser, all you got to do is tap and hold on that image. And then up will pop up this. You can either save the image or copy it. If you save it, it saves it into your saved photo album. Then you can import it into lots of different apps, including Comic Touch. Now we. Because the point of making these is to share it with others, probably posting it onto a website or a blog, emailing it around. So you want to be conscientious of copyright. And uh, so you want to make sure you have permission using Creative Commons images that are licensed for reuse and repurpose would be great. There's Flickr and Wikimedia, but also uh, recently this summer, Google has now included uh, a Creative Commons search in its image search. Because that's where people go, teachers and, and students and everybody, when they want to find an image, they go to Google image search. The trick is you actually have to go to the advanced image search. And if you're doing this on an iPhone or an iPod Touch, you actually have to go into the classic view and find advanced. But then once you're there, it takes you to the, to the big format page. And you get to see, uh, you get to put all different advanced features in, including dialing up the labeled for reuse with modification. Then you know you're using things you can use. Uh, that's one way to get images, is save them from your browser. Another way to get these images is to take a screenshot. And this is built in to every iPhone and iPod Touch, is when you press and hold the sleep-wake button at the top and the home button on the face of it, the screen will flash. There'll be this clicking sound. and then. Whatever's on the screen is saved into your saved photos album. So it's actually really fun to save images from the built-in app, Google Maps. You can go in, and this is actually the Supreme Court building of the United States. I can hold down the sleep-wake button and push that home button on the, on the face of it, and this image will be saved right into my photos. And I can bring that into my comic. But what's even more fun is to use Street View. So if you click and you place a pin onto the, onto the map somewhere, and you tap it and you click the Street View icon, you can be instantly transported to that location, all right in your hand. As I'm visiting London, I'm finding that I'm probably doing as much sightseeing through Street View as I am really walking around. It's like, oh, what is that going to look like when I get there? Uh, and then you can even position it so, uh, oh, there's the, the, the Capitol building. I can take a screenshot of it and then use that in a comic. In fact, another app that I like for designing, for making comics is Strip Designer. Strip Designer lets me have comics with up to three panels. 
And so let's say the job of one of my students, or it's actually one of the goals, uh, standards is that students have to understand the three branches of the U.S. government, and uh, so I'd have them make a comic about the, these three branches and maybe their role in an issue. So uh, here's what I created. I did this all on an iPod Touch. I can save images from the web. I can take screenshots. So I have the three buildings where the three branches of government meet. I have their leaders, and then they're actually telling about what their role is in government in general, and then how they deal with an issue. And the, the issue I've picked out on this one is uh, mandated health insurance, which is a big deal in the states right now. For younger students, you can keep it even simpler. And just to, who makes the laws, suggests and enforce the laws, and interprets the laws. There's, there's our three branches and, and the buildings right there. So students have a great time making this, interacting with the content, synthesizing it together, and then sharing it with each other. And then there's a few different apps, like Ali's Jigsaw Puzzle, where you can take any image you've saved, including your comic, and then make it into a jigsaw puzzle that you can put back together. This is powerful if students are actually making comics about different things. They share them and then look at them and then piece them back together because, you know, whatever you make a jigsaw out of, you remember. All right, so that's comics. Now on to animations. Back when I was using Palms with students, I uh, loved, it was my favorite app, was Sketchy. It's, you make a, a animation frame by frame, you make a little change, and then when you play them in a row, you got yourself a pretty awesome animation. And so, uh, that's great. You could put the stylus on the screen, which now when you make animations on the iPod Touch, you can get a stylus, but using your finger just doesn't work quite as well. Uh, but putting together these animations can take some time, but it's time well spent. Students have to plan them out, they decide how they're going to make them. It, Again, does take some time to put them together, but they're interacting with the content and thinking of an audience the whole time. And then they love to show them to each other. And that's what they can do with Flipbook. Uh, Flipbook is an app in the App Store, and there's several of them, but I like this one because it has onion skinning and it has layers. So you can put together these amazing animations, and then right from the handheld, you can share them onto its companion website, flipbook.tv. And there are some really great animations on flipbook.tv. Some of them educational, some of them not, but you know, there's, there's a pig driving a car. Uh, and there's time, I'm gonna skip a few. Oh, this one's, a, this one's pretty cool here. Uh, this is called, the, uh, called Cycles. All this drawn directly on an iPod Touch. Then you can even take this a little bit further and put together a whole bunch of screenshots you've taken. And somebody did this. They took screenshots of every step they took in New York City in Google Street View and then pieced them all together into Flipbook and uploaded it to flipbook.tv. And then, this one is amazing. Obviously, an artist put this one together. But to think that this was actually made on an iPod Touch is just astounding. He made it. Oh, whoops, spider web. <laughs> so animations are, are fun to watch, obviously, and it's, uh, it's great to create them and share them with people. So the final thing I want to share with you is making audio podcasts. And the, there's a built-in app called Voice Memos. 
Now, you're thinking, same thing I am, is that the iPod Touch does not have a built-in microphone. Hopefully someday it will, but it still has microphone capabilities if you plug one in. So there are microphones that plug into the dock connector at the bottom that you can buy. You can use the headphones that come with an iPhone because it has the mic built into the, into the uh, cord there. So anyway, you got to get a mic, but it actually has the app on there already if you have the latest software. And you can turn your iPod into a little mini recording studio. Uh, this is handy for when students need to record in the field. There aren't enough computers to record directly into. This is my preferred way to record just into the computer so I can edit it there. But we've got this little miniature podcast studio. It's kind of cool. And then students can record things like uh, their reflections, feedback to the teacher. They can do a reader's theater, record interviews, do skits. But I want to share with you a sound scene tour. Sound scene tour means you're, you're walking around on a field trip, and you're just, you have to describe everything you see because you don't have a video camera. You're just doing it through audio. And it makes you really think about what you're looking at because you have to describe it to people. So I recently went on a field trip in Tucson with a group of teachers. And we went to the Sonoran Desert Museum. I mean, yes, it's a, it's a museum about the desert in the desert, <laughs> out in the desert. And it was really, really hot, really hot. And I went under this tree, and I felt this light mist. And I thought, wow, they've, this is, I'm going to stand under here for a while. They've rigged this up to be pr pretty nice. So then I asked this docent, he, right there, and then actually a second docent, said, where is that mist coming from? And with my iPod, this is, this is what I was told. Is it just me, or do I feel like droplets of something when I'm under some of these trees? Yeah, there's an insect that's pooping on you. That's what that is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's all over. Oh, I know. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you feel it and look real quick, you see a little clear drop of water. Uh-huh. And uh, it's just the insect poop. Is that, as I explained to them, it, it drinks the, uh, the uh, liquid in the leaf. As it pierces the leaf, the leaf has pressure. Uh, and the pressure goes right into their mouth part, into their body, right down the digestive tract, which is almost a straight line out from here. So the water from the trees is going straight yeah, through them. Well, yeah, but in order to make room for what they're trying to ingest, the pressure just... And so it's a constant... But you've got hundreds of them up there. Uh -huh, like, yeah, I felt... Yeah, and it, and it feels like a light drizzle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you're always carrying around a recorder with you, uh, you never know what you might pick up there. Uh, but through the, whole, through the whole field trip experience, I go through and I record what I'm seeing and hearing. But then when I get back to school, I have to then pick out the parts that I want to keep. Uh, inside of the, the built-in voice memo app, you, you can trim the beginning and end, but you can't edit the middle. And then, inside that app, then you can also share, and you can send it through email. So my students can send me an email with their recording, or if you trust them, if they publish directly, they can actually email it to a, a free website called Posterous. And you just, they'll give you an email that you send to, and then it automatically makes a blog post with the audio in it. So you just record on your iPod, say share, email it, and then it's on the web. And then it also has an RSS feed, so that RSS feed can be put into iTunes and subscribed to as a podcast. So my students could, oh, got trigger happy here. My students could, still trigger happy. <laughs> my students could, uh, have a podcast as a teacher, I can subscribe to it, and I can get what they're saying, the reflections on learning. Anyhow, those are just three of the things that you can actually create on a handheld device. Because, again, we know we can drill and kill, we can quiz until the cows come home, but doing things that I know that, uh, as 12-year-old Tony Vincent would, would approve of, <laughs> and say, aha, I, he, again, when I was 12, I loved to create things. I wanted to share what I created with others. And then I also wanted a choice in what I could create. And that's where the handheld comes in, too, is that we have this variety of apps. So we don't have to say, you are going to use Comic Touch to show me what you've learned, and you're going to use this. Let students decide. That piece about sharing can be really important, because when they know that they're sharing it with others, instead of just turning something into the teacher, it becomes very important for them to get it right. 
Well, I share a podcast on my website, learninginhand.com, where I go through a lot of things with creation in the iPod Touch. And then I have uh, all the resources and apps that I mentioned here in the guide for the conference at bit.ly slash iGuide. And now it's time for drinks, right? So thank you very much for your attention.